I picked up the guitar and the drums pretty much at about the same time. Actually, my first instrument was trombone. But as destiny would have it, my first band opening was for a drummer. I guess this would be an introduction to Stewart's new drum kit. Basically, it's a copy of his original drum set from 1983. Sizes are all the same, a few variations in the cymbals, but it's an exact copy of the Synchronicity 1983 drum set. With the addition of the Stuart Copeland signature snare drum. My relationship with Tom and Drums began in a rather rather dubious fashion, as a matter of fact. I was a reviewer of drum equipment for um, Sounds Magazine in London in 1975. Uh, and um, they, I was given this set of Japanese drums to review. And Tom was really the first drum manufacturer to design equipment for rock music, to be played hard and to be played by gorillas like myself. So there I am, actually not a gorilla at the time, I'm a, I'm a starving, skinny reviewer for a music magazine. But I got these drummers and they turned me into a gorilla. Uh, the, so that was the, I was just looking at them. Then you whack them. The sound, just the sound of the drums, whoa, they just explode on impact. Whoa, and they just, there was a, a feel and a sound to them, as well as the equipment. For me as a reviewer, it was a no-brainer. I had to get me some. I think a lot of what a lot of people ask about Stewart's drums in general is why the sizes? Why standard sized tom toms as opposed to long deep tom toms? And Stewart was touring through America in a station wagon. Part of getting the sound to project to the audience, higher pitched drums, smaller, higher pitched drums, which could crack through. So I was actually playing in a band at the time called Curved Air. Of course, I played in like the fifth generation of the band way after it had lost all of its following, lost its credibility and everything, but never mind that. I sent to the importer of Tom and Drums, I sent all the headlines of the group from years before I joined and convinced them to give me a free set of drums. That was 33 years ago. And I've been playing these drums ever since. Many times over, I could buy any drums I want. The American companies started to catch up and copy, pretty much following in the footsteps of Tama, started to build drums that looked pretty much like Tama, but they were still behind. Tama is bursting ahead with things like the gong drum over there, and just revolutionary shapes of the different kinds of drums they were making. They just continued to leave everybody in their dust. One day they invented these, these octobands here, which are kind of cool looking, which is the main reason I got them, but they also, intriguingly, actually sound really cool. Reggae, they fit really good, you know. They, they cut through, they have a lot of impact, but they cut through, and it's kind of a unique, interesting sound. But he goes for a really tight, quick respond, responsive head sound. get as much of a rebound, as much of a bounce back. So the smaller toms tight, with the lower heads getting a nice deep pitch, um, makes them cut through, project through the big wall of sound, as it were. By the way, here's a trick for any young drummer who wants to uh, be on the front of uh, Drum World magazine. It's really easy. Basically what you do is you take every rhythm that you play, move it one quarter note to the left, you gotta tell the band you're doing it or else they'll get confused. Just take everything. See, I moved every beat that I play and moved it one quarter note to the right, which is why I got rich and famous. So one beat to the right is taken, but one beat to the left is still free. It's still available for anyone. The first person who, who hears this and runs down to their band room and does this is gonna be rich and famous. My last drum set that I got from Tama was a green sparkle drum set, which is green because I, I like the color green and I hadn't seen much in the way of uh, green drums. But then when it came time to play the police, green just didn't seem right. Green is not a police color. This is a police color. It has been a real interesting journey to come back to my group that I broke out with. I played in groups before, but The Police was the group that really invented me as a musician. Stuart's signature, I suppose, 
of all the elements of the sound of the drums, the way he attacks the drums, the way is the way he feels the rhythm. People talk about a unique style, and I'm not r really sure what they're talking about because I just play instinctively. I don't really think about uh, uniqueitude. I guess maybe I grew up in uh, the Arab world, and I grew up listening to Arabic music instead of American music. I don't know. Maybe that might have contributed to different sensibilities. All I can tell you is that I got real lucky. <laughs>